Uh, thank you. So, uh, so I'm going to talk about uh, seniority uh, on, on subject. I, I'm still not quite used to pronounce that name, so uh, maybe I might still use the word Shasper interchangeably in this talk. Uh, but uh, seniority was uh, the Ethereum 2.0's uh, current code name. Previously, it's called uh, Shasper, so we just named our uh, Ethereum 2.0 client uh, Shasper as well, uh, because no one was taken that day. Uh, and uh, I'm going to do a sort of uh, deep dive into this code base. It's going to be a little bit technical, but uh, some, uh, yeah, first, first something about me, I'm a, a Rust developer at Fire Technologies, and uh, Shasper is a, a beacon chain, uh, Synrenity beacon chain, uh, built on top of uh, Subtrick. Uh, so first, some disclaimers uh, that uh, this is only about uh, beacon chain because uh, Ethereum 2.0 is a large project and there will be many freezes to be carried out. Uh, the fir first freeze is free zero and uh, we will get a beacon, beacon chain hopefully soon enough. But uh, just know that on this beacon chain there will, in free zero at least, there will currently be no uh, sharding, not not yet. We don't yet have that. Uh, and uh, another disclaimer is our code base was uh, actually quite old. It was written uh, when the 2.1 uh, specification of Beacon Chain came out, uh, and we still have uh, some part of it uh, still in our runtime. So our code is still like uh, 60 or 80 percent uh, spec 2.0, but uh, this talk will be based on the newest current spec. Uh, and it's also, I'm not going to deep, like really deep into the, the Beacon Jazz specification, but I will touch uh, some of it. Uh, but this talk will be more about the uh, Shasper's implementation, how we build it uh, on top of uh, Subfreak. Uh, I was asked to make, make this talk very technical, uh, hopefully, I, I I I did it, but uh, most most of the time, like if you are really familiar with uh, like Ethereum two point zero, you probably find this talk really boring. Or if you are really familiar with Subscript, and uh, I'm not the, the like the 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 the, the author of of uh, the beacon chance bag or uh, or uh, Subscript, so. Uh, uh, so this talk is based on my current understanding, and uh, uh, some of them may be wrong, so it's only 90% correct. Uh, and uh, just if you're not familiar with those names, uh, so uh, Serenity is going to uh, like uh, try to solve the current uh, Ethereum's really pressing problem, scaling issue with shading. And we are doing that in the first uh, free zero, uh, through beacon chain, we also have the shiny uh, Casper proof of stake uh, consensus algorithm, and Substrict is a, a general blockchain framework that we build at Parity Technologies. Uh, so we write everything in full Rust, and uh, it's also uh, uh, really related to WebAssembly, which uh, I will talk about a, a little bit later. Uh, but uh, first, uh, still about Synchronity. Uh, Synchronity is like the really bare minimal thing, like we don't have like anything else. It's just bare minimal to get a proof of stake chain going. Uh, and uh, like we want to do further uh, sharding uh, uh, or the actual, like you can actually do, do state transactions uh, stuff like that uh, in phase one and phase two, but right now we are just trying to lay out the foundations and make the future work of Ethereum 2.0 easier. Uh, so, uh, so what we we have actually in in the, the beacon chain three zero. So we have a money transfer function uh, that allows you to transfer uh, money from uh, the Ethereum. Uh, 1.0 chain into the beacon chain. This is actually more like a board, like your money is forever lost in the in the Ethereum uh, 1.0 chain. Uh, and uh, 
it, it stores the, the validator states and balances. Uh, basically, this is needed for the proof of stake uh, consensus and also handle the rewards. Uh, and those uh, validators make uh, attachments. And uh, this attachment is to uh, uh, make uh, justify and finalize block. And those are all, all terms uh, in Casper, which I will talk about later. But this is also all part of the proof of stake algorithm. And we will also have some slashing conditions. It's also for the Casper consensus algorithm uh, that for the validators. And uh, yeah, and of course we have the Casper for Uh And Casper is actually uh, like the, the actual definition doesn't uh, really touch the proposer layer, but uh, we need a way to like uh, make proposers. Uh, so uh, currently we have the Randolph uh, algorithm to do that, which is just getting some random uh, a random function that allows you to choose a proposer uh, on the chat. But there are some security vulnerabilities of course, and there are also uh, like solutions, but uh, right now we are not going to implement. We are probably not. The, the spec is not yet finalized, but uh, from what I understand, right now we are just using random uh, to select proposals. Uh, so, uh, so the thing is, uh, nobody is able to make transactions on the Bitcoin chain, and the only thing you can participate in is become a validator and a test block, propose blocks. Uh, but we need a new new blockchain, so uh, so uh, we need a new blockchain plan. Now, now what do we do? Uh, so a blockchain contains uh, a lot of uh, functionalities. Uh, the most important part uh, is probably state transition and consensus. Why I call them most important is because uh, that's what. Uh, if you if you currently look into the the beacon chain specification, this is what you will find. You will only find <coughs> state transition and consensus. And in the future, we will also need to figure out, like in the really short term future, we will also need to figure out uh, how uh, our plants uh, actually communicate with other peers. And so we will also have a specification for uh, networking, but. But the issue is we have all the other parts that we actually need uh, that uh, is can be general uh, because we like like if, if you don't there's no uh, no special specification for that then we can just use any uh, framework to do that. Uh, so the issue is like like if you see this part we can actually uh, load them. Like several times, like or millions of times, like in uh, in party theorem, in in gas, in other uh, full node plans. Uh, however, the issue is uh, reusing the code, uh, like reusing this backend or the other transaction coin, or the block import coin, or the, the other logic is not very easy. Uh, the issue is that the data structure we have is actually really pinned to the, the state transaction and consensus part. So, uh, so we can't just directly take out like a transaction queen and use it in another plan. Uh, and also uh, for Beacon Chan, uh, everything is uh, vastly different. Like all the block structures are different. Uh, the, way, uh, the, the way the consensus work is also different. Uh, so there's uh, uh, probably nearly nothing in common, and uh, uh, yeah, except uh, the Hashi algorithm, which, which is still the the hack uh, three uh, uh, two two five six. Uh, and if we if we want uh, to like do it like in an existing plan, like in Party Ethereum, it also add a lot of additional complexity. Uh, that is really hard to handle. Uh, so, so actually, uh, this is not uh, the only case. Uh, this is not the only case where we 
people try to like for us we try to first research whether we can build it in polyethylene and for other teams which tries to build on uh, build a beacon chain plant like the harmony team they also try to write the the, the beacon chain plant first on an existing code base but uh, it also really, uh, doesn't quite work out uh, so the, we left with uh, two tries. Either we can start from scratch, uh, write a new plant, write all the other stuff we need uh, ourselves, or or we can try to build it in substrate. Uh, so uh, so of course we, we first try the second one because it's easier for us. And what we what we get from substrate? So uh, so we get. Uh, Light plant and WebAssembly by default. Uh, I I need uh, the 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 substrate framework is built with uh, the light plant consensus. Uh, the light plant in mind, so you always have uh, some light plant functionality to work with. Uh, and also the the WebAssembly is used to run the runtime. Uh, and we get all the hard parts that people just want the default implementation like. Uh, we just we just want a backend, uh, a safe backend that works. We just want the transaction queen that works. Uh, so uh, and also the uh, basic chain syncing and also the basic JSON RPC stuff. Uh, so uh, it's a mostly general uh, blockchain framework, and we actually have a lot more, but probably not covered in this talk. So this comes to our current uh, Shasper code base. Uh, so we have, uh, basically we just need to implement uh, three things. Of course there are some columns that we also need to uh, add some supporting exception, but basically we, we uh, just need to implement three things, the runtime, uh, consensus, and block ordering. Uh, four things, uh, also the validator logic, but currently we don't yet have the validator logic. And the uh, other things uh, can hopefully all be uh, handled in subject, and so we don't need to write it again. So uh, first about the, uh, the runtime, so, uh, so, so if you're familiar with, uh, with how blockchain works, this slide is probably boring, but basically you have uh, a child block, but those blocks will also have uh, state associated with them, and how it will transit from one state to another is through a state transition function. Uh, so uh, in subtree, we we'll, we call this uh, state transition function also a uh, runtime. So how how does it work in subtree? So uh, so for subtree, we expose several functions uh, that can be queried. Like uh, I will show an example later. And uh, we talk with the state backend, like if you need to uh, store, uh, actually store something in the state, you use the, the state backend. And we make, make it so that this, uh, uh, this real time always run na natively and in web assembly, uh, both. Uh, we also make sure the uh, web assembly uh, backcode uh, is written into the state. So uh, this, is, this is just so that uh, that uh, it is easier for to talk with other uh, subject uh, blockchains, and we want to make sure that uh, the 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 state transaction are always deterministic. Uh, so I will also talk about it later. Uh, so just an example how things are usually defined in subject. So we have like. Uh, these are these are extra functions that can be queried uh, from uh, for from a client to a runtime. Uh, so, for example, if if a client wants to sync a block and uh, further the state transition function, we will just use this call the runtime and call this execute block function. Or if we want to build a new block ourselves, we want to propose a block, then we use. Uh, uh, apply is extrinsic, finalized block, inherently extrinsic. Uh, those uh, functions. 
uh, to uh, if we bring the block builder tree to uh, to uh, gen generate a block and uh, uh, go further with it. Uh, so we have a few uh, assumptions in that tree. Uh, a block is always uh, structured uh, at least with header and uh, Extrinsic. We have a, a few more for so other things, but they're not being really recorded here. Uh, so we want to make sure that uh, if you have a header, then uh, we want to make sure that it can always be generated from uh, the latest state or when the transaction, the state transaction is finalized. And we want to make sure that the uh, so called extrinsic uh, contains all the, uh, the external outputs. Uh, but uh, like nearly not, none of the the blockchains uh, outside of a subject flow. For example, uh, in the hidden chain spec, they have they only have this hard root and seed root that can be statically uh, generated either when we build a block or we finalize a block. But for this slot or for this random review for the Ethereum one data. And for signature, this always requires some external input. So, uh, so how? Uh, yeah, and there are also like a lot of other stuff in the in uh, in the beacon chain spec uh, in the block body. So, so what do we do? We have headers that contain external output. So, uh, uh, so solution is just to move move them to its extrinsic. Uh, so we split uh, extrinsic into two parts. First, we call it the uh, inherent extrinsic, uh, which is usually have one uh, per type, and uh, we generate it uh, internally within the client. So these these are things like uh, <coughs> the random review, the slot, and Ethereum one data. Uh, those things. So. Is they are externally inputted into the runtime, uh, and we have actual transactions which uh, this currently actually includes uh, attachment and also uh, slashing deposits, uh, those kind of stuff in the beacon chain. Uh, so, uh, so this is how the current in intrinsic will look like. So, uh, like in the, in the actual. Uh, Casper or in other classic code. So first we call the we get some extrinsic extrinsic data and we call the inherent extrinsic function, uh, which will actually generate the extrinsic for us to uh, uh, to push. And this this extrinsic will be pushed to the uh, headers uh, uh, blocks for. And uh, when we do the, and then when we apply the extrinsic, we just check whether, uh, whether at a specific, uh, like extrinsic or transaction that we have the actual things we need. So this this is uh, the 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 subtrix uh, adapter design. So uh, now we have a block structure uh, that uh, looks. Different uh, uh, when stored internally and when in the specification. Uh, so, uh, so in this case, we just generate uh, adapter method that converts this internally uh, those internal representations into the uh, specification uh, representations. And uh, this, of course, comes with some performance penalty. Uh, but as long as we have the the, all the hashes. That can be computed uh, cheaply, uh, then everything should be fine because we are just moving a bunch of values around. Uh, there's also the the multi uh support in software that aims to solve this problem. This is mostly for things like uh, if we need to store a list or store like a, a, a map, and then but uh, that list or map also has uh, a certification representation, uh, then we will need to use something called multi uh, So that's about uh, runtime, and uh, 
Uh, next is about consensus. So for consensus, uh, this is a brief overview of how the uh, Casper FFG works. This is the current uh, consensus algorithm in Deacon Chan. We might uh, switch to Casper CD3, but uh, nobody's sure about that yet. Uh, so, uh, so for the for uh, so how the Casper FFG works is basically we have a list of validators, and uh, those validators would a uh, test block that they think uh, is uh, the, uh, the, the, the next uh, hack. Uh, and if, if a client find out, okay, enough validators uh, attached this, uh, this, this block, then, uh, then this from block and two block form a super majority link. And uh, in some conditions, it then, uh, if some conditions for the super major majority link holds, then we mark a block and as justified. If some further uh, condition holds, then we mark the block as finalized. Uh, so in this case, we uh, if uh, uh, if no more than uh, two thirds of the validators uh, violates two slashing conditions, then uh, we will always make sure that uh, we don't uh, we don't finalize two blocks at the same slot. So uh, so so in that case we uh, there's also other properties that we make it uh, that is BIT safe. Uh, so for for consensus right in the current uh, Shasper code base uh, we uh, the, all the slashing and the validation, attention validation logic uh, can be done just in runtime, and uh, sometimes we need a, additional information that doesn't actually need in the spec, but we also uh, <coughs> put them in into the runtime because uh, those information are needed by consensus, and this currently we only have one instance. It's the latest. Uh, attach the information from different validators. Uh, so, uh, so how do we actually do the the consensus and for price rule? So we just uh, delegate everything into a tree like this, which you would call block, uh, like like all the uh, the the import we would call this uh, import block function first. And this import function can then decide, okay, so uh, whether I want to accept this block, whether I want actually want to set this block as a final chance or it's just a leaf, uh, things like that. And and uh, this is uh, this tweet, uh, a strong implement this tweet, we always have the like uh, most of the control for it. Uh, so in this case, how to validate the uh, Ethereum uh, 1.0 data? So uh, we, we use the inherent extrinsic, but because the logic is kind of inverse, which uh, you need to have the, uh, the, the get into the runtime first, and then in the runtime validate it. But of course, we can't uh, do the validation in runtime because in that case, uh, the runtime wouldn't be really deterministic. Uh, so in this case, we make the consensus layer handle the validation uh, and use that to for whatever source it wants. So, uh, so in that case, the runtime will just accept whatever value it gets from the Ethereum one data, but the consensus layer will handle the validation and actually reject block if the Ethereum one data doesn't So. Uh, so the source can be different, like we can use party theorem, we can follow it with party theorem, or we can just do it through an RPC point, uh, or anything else. Uh, another thing about consensus is how we uh, deploy hard fork for Shasper. Uh, the issue is we wrote the, the, the web assembly bytecode into the state, so how do you change that. Uh, the, the, the solution, uh, probably a better solution, but currently uh, the thing I'm thinking about is to just 
upgrade uh, using her extrinsic. Uh, and uh, and in this, this way, the consensus layer, uh, yeah, the consensus layer, uh, if we want to import it in a particular block, then the consensus layer can actually uh, can just reject uh, if in that particular block, if we don't have this extrinsic, then we consider uh, the uh, the block to be invalid. And uh, about the rest of things, I mentioned there are three things we need to implement. Uh, but what about networking? Uh, so currently, there is no noise certification yet. So uh, I think we can't uh, talk with other. Uh, beacon chain can yet, but uh, we can because uh, Subtree has its own uh, network layer, so we can spin up a local test set or things like that. Uh, but uh, once the specification is out, then uh, we probably will, will just uh, plug it in into the network layer, or in the worst case, we will just create a new network layer and use the, uh, the external function. Just uh, manually to uh, get uh, the, the block data from uh, a bigger chunk uh, Yeah, so that's basically it. And uh, uh, any questions? <laughs>